I'm Aaron Porter, and I'm with the company Ebony and Thou. Thank you very much for joining me today. We're going to talk about Drupal, pause, and disruptive technology. Uh, how to maximize your profits through efficient tech. That being said, I'll give you a very short disclaimer about this presentation. This presentation is actually kind of in Kiev and a couple other camps last year. So I really wanted to get here to London and I proposed this session, but I also proposed this session. And they sent me the schedule at first and it said, you've been selected for this session. So I was like, sweet, all right, I'm going to make this new presentation. And I started from scratch and I was working and I was doing all this stuff. And a couple of days later, they sent the, they, they actually put up the schedule and they said, here you go, you've been selected for this session. And I was like, are you sure? Yeah, this is the one we want you to give. And I had already put in hours. And I thought, yeah, but, nope, but, guys. And so, long story short, I was in a dilemma. But suddenly, I had an idea. So, without further ado, welcome to Drupal Pause and Disruptive Technology. How to maximize your profits through efficient tech. Also known in some circles as <laughs> <laughs> this cloud tech right for your business. How to mac maximize your profits while disrupting an industry. Don't worry, the information is pretty much the same. It's the format and the delivery that's going to make this one so much more fun. Okay? So, um, let's see. Every once in a while, I have to come over here because if I go away from my slides, it's not that I don't know them, but I have the tendency to do this because I think my voice is so awesome. And my presentation will quickly go from 30 minutes to you guys tell me to shut up. So, uh, all right, next thing. Um, the question, is cloud tech right for your business? To answer that very shortly, yes. Are there any questions? <laughs> no? Thanks for coming. See you next year. Just kidding, okay, I'll quit joking around. Um, to really understand that, we have to take just a very brief intro to uh, Cloud 101. So, what is this cloud thing anyway? More importantly, as entrepreneurs, as uh, IT people, project managers, and whatnot, how does it benefit us? Does it benefit us? But I thought I'd throw that in there for fun too. Has anybody ever experienced that? Maybe 10 years ago? All right, anyway. So, down to the good stuff. Um, your cloud is hardware, okay? Very simply stated. Obviously, I'm oversimplifying. But this is the cloud. That's it. It's computers, it's servers, it's components, and they're sitting around waiting for somebody to tell them what to do. Yes, a lot of times uh, they do have some sort of modest service offerings, email, caching, things like that, but, <coughs> yes it is overly, overly simplified, but in reality, most of what we think of as the cloud is that stuff. And that stuff is then offered to you as a service, or people are building services on that stuff for you. Um, so, how does that help us? Well, we can look at it a few different ways. One, let's consider if you were just starting, uh, deciding to start your own Drupal shop. And, um, or maybe you're already in business and you decide that what you really want to do is you need to expand your business because you just landed a major contract and you, know, you're, you already have your, your architecture set up, but this big project is really pushing the limits of your computing capacity. Um, it's pushing the capacity so far as I would say many of us had to think about the capacity last year of suspending our disbelief when somebody tried to tell us that that was the worst, fierce, most fearsome bond villain ever. Sorry, that joke fuck. But anyway, <laughs> seriously, um, what we're talking about is that one of the first things Maybe you guys can give me some feedback. If you wanted to start your business, 
or you wanted to expand for this part, for this new contract, what is one of the very first things that you would have to do? Anybody? Make coffee. Make coffee, all right. Number two, anybody? Any ideas? No? You have to spend money, right? If you're starting your business, you have to buy a bunch of stuff. Uh, if you need to add, you have to spend a bunch, you have to go out and you've got to spend a bunch more money. So, in business, we, we actually call this capital expenditure. And if you don't have the capital to expend, starting or growing your business can be very difficult. So, um, let's see. With this, the point is, you don't have to come up with all that capital expenditure. Okay? You don't have to have all that money up front. That's where you're actually able to use all this equipment for a lot less money. You don't have to come out of pocket thousands or even hundreds of thousands or however much money. So with this, you can lease it, you can rent it, you can borrow it, but it's important here, you don't have to buy it. Okay? That's where you're really saving the good money. So if you guys are with me on that, we could say, I can't drive that point home enough. You don't have to buy all of this stuff, okay? But for sake of argument, let's say that you decide to do it the old fashioned way and you buy all of your stuff, okay? Or even if you already had everything and you decide that the cloud just isn't the right choice for you, now what? Well, now that means either you or these guys have to deal with some of this. You have to deal with a lot of this. And you have to deal with even more of this. Right? And what's that all got to do with well, What does that cost you? Cost you that, and cost you that. But since we're all great entrepreneurs and we have unlimited funds and we have unlimited time in the day, that's no big deal, right? Okay. So now we've done all of our great architecture and we've got everything set up because we did it the old fashioned way. We have everything we need. We're ready to get down to business and do some serious Drupal Ninja, Drupal development, kicking stuff and swords and stuff like that. Um, so, what's the next thing that we have to contend with? The next part that we contend with is the realities of production. Okay? And what are those production realities? Well, take a closer look. The thing is, when we're dealing with the reality of production, we have to consider certain factors. One of those is your personnel, your people. And people's skills tend to ripen like apples. What I mean by that, it's a slow and linear process. And usually once people become competent, after you've brought them to that <coughs> level of competency, oftentimes they'll actually, they tend to stagnate and they get stuck for a while, it becomes static. It happens to everybody. So, um, The next thing that we would really consider is adding personnel is costly. Okay? Again, big money. Think about what this costs to you. Again, you're the entrepreneur, you're the IT manager, director, whatever. What it's costing you or your company to bring these people on board, train them, the uh, reduced production capacity until they're competent, and all of these other factors. It's very easy to see that adding people or personnel is very costly. So, how do we deal with that? Well, you have to consider that what we do in the IT world is done through our tools and our processes, like any sort of production environment, be it manufacturing, IT, and I like the manufacturing analogy, saying tools and processes, they are your IT factory, your development factory. <coughs> so what is that, what am I really trying to say with all that? It's basically this. 
in the IT industry, the brain capacity of yourselves or your personnel can only be improved so much. So if you really want to see the largest boost in your productive capabilities, it's going to be through your tools and processes. So we have our Drupal development factory. Your platform that you develop in is your software factory. It's part tool and it's part process. Simply put, it's where you develop and maintain your Drupal projects or Drupal sites. The fact is, you already have a platform, even if you don't realize it. Um, the questions are, how efficient is it? Can it be improved? And if it can be improved, how does that translate into revenue for you and your company? So, first point, talking about platform and Drupal projects, small projects, what do they really need? You know, they, they don't necessarily need these big specialized tools. If you're developing, um, you know, just a couple of brochure sites, throw a couple of modules together, throw some themes together, put it into a web hotel, bam, you've got your website up and going. But what about Big Project, Big Drupal? Big Drupal has an entirely different set of needs. Big resources, um, let's see, they, as I said, it's not the same thing. They, they have to be done with complex planning, processes, and larger teams. Those teams then need to collaborate with each other, multiple organizations, and they usually require distributed systems, which, as we know, everybody understands distributed systems, right? Probably not. Most people think they do, but in fact, distributed systems tend to be extremely complex. They require system architects, programmers, administrators, Truth be told, typically only your top-notch uh, senior engineers can even program distributed systems. And the sad fact is that the standard thinking of, well, you know, our guys are IT, IT guys, our guys do Drupal, our guys can do all of the distributed systems. Well, maybe they can. Maybe, they, maybe you guys, everybody is that good and they can do all that. But what's that going to cost? in terms of labor and time and money, again, all of these same things. So how much does it really cost your organization to take somebody whose job is to develop websites and then tell them, all right, you need to design these distributed systems now. So let's get back to this as a service stuff. What does that really mean? I'll go over these with you. And I'm sorry, for, I'm sure every, I mean, probably everybody knows all this stuff, but just to be safe, you know, we've got our infrastructure as a service, we've got our platform as a service, we've got our software as a service, service, and we've got data as a service. Since they have those fancy acronyms, I thought this cartoon was appropriate. Now, the bottom two, SAS and DAS, I don't know if that's how you say it, but that's how I say it. Um, we're not even really going to concentrate on them. What we're really going to look at is PAS, Platform as a Service. The reason for that being is because all that stuff I'm, I'm rambling on about, cost and distributed systems and planning and all that stuff can be streamlined with a good PAS. EOS is great too, but even with EOS, you still have to deal with a lot of this, a lot of this, and probably these guys. So, pause, you see when I say you can streamline, it's, it's not the same case. Um, with pause, it's, it's a one-stop solution where you can go in and, yeah, I don't know, more, I'll come back to that actually, it's more on that in a minute. So, just to wrap this whole idea up about these acronyms, and this is where the term disruptive technology comes in, is that in reality, all of those acronyms represent the disruptive technologies that are available to the IT industry today, people in this industry. 
Um, you know, this is, we're the first generation of entrepreneurs and IT professionals that has access, literally has access, to billions of dollars in computing equipment without <coughs> having to pay for all that stuff. Okay? So when I say that you can take on the titans of industry and you can take on tech giants from your own private company that you're starting in a bedroom somewhere or a closet somewhere, you can. You absolutely can. You just need something to level the playing field. But if you think that I'm full of it because my shirt says cloud and I obviously have a biased opinion, consider this. Did you know that Amazon Web Services runs all of these companies? Has anybody seen their revenue for last year? Okay. They're running on the same technology that we all have access to. So I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that we can literally take on the giants without having to come up with the money and the time and, and the expertise even necessarily that it has traditionally taken in the past. So, back to my catchphrase. The thing you need to level the playing field, at least in my world, my universe, and Drupal, is platform, is platform as a service. Why pause? <coughs> Back to this fancy little video. Because you develop as developers, you need a platform. Okay? A developer's platform is the development and maintenance environment. It is the tools and processes used to build and run your services. This is where you make your Drupal magic happen. Okay? Pause is a ready-to-go solution with everything already installed and configured. That means no delays in provisioning and coding and server architectures and all that stuff. And this is a tool and it is a platform and it is designed for one specific purpose. Productivity. Okay? So, which Drupal projects benefit the most from pause? I would say small or large. Well, we already said small projects are a lot easier. They don't have the same needs. But the truth is, any project can benefit from pause. In fact, for the smaller projects, there are even pause providers that have free services. So that still streamlines your development. Um, but larger projects are where you're truly going to realize the biggest benefits. Because pause and Big Drupal. What is Big Drupal? It's where you need static or dynamic elasticity. You need reliability. You need continuous development. You need security. You need cross-team collaboration. You might need high availability. You might need fault tolerance. You know, there are all these other things to consider. So, how does this affect your client's perspective? Well, the thing is, is that you have a proven solution. And what I mean by that is that you know it works. You've been using this, you know that you can produce and you can stay on schedule. What does that mean for your client? Well, any good client that has been searching for services has done homework on you as well. If you have a proven solution, then you'll have a good reputation for your life, for your work and what you can do. Um, which, in the end, of course, means once you have that reputation, that reduces risk, it reduces insecurity, it increases the client's confidence in you and your company. <coughs> confidence, of course, is what our clients are buying from us most of the time anyway, right? It allows us to uh, meet the demanding deadlines of projects. You're saving potentially hundreds of hours without having to do all of that other work. And then, of course, there are the bonus features, which the clients might not ever even know about. Uh, and what I mean specifically by that is true high availability, fault tolerance, multi-zone redundancy. 
You've built incredible SLAs. Your client might not know what any of that is. They just know they want this website and they want it to work when it has to work. But you know what that stuff is worth. So that can be a huge bonus for you right there. Pause in Drupal development. We're going to recap here. Very quickly, we'll look at the pros. No infrastructure maintenance, right? That's good. Less cost. You guys agree with me there? Yes? Okay. There's no provisioning, which means you save time without having to do all that initial software installation and configuration. There's no delay in your provisioning. Pause is ready to go out of the box. No assembly required. You can start from scratch, literally. And within an hour, you can have a high availability site up and running. And it's just no comparison. Um, pause allows you to manage uncertainty from day one. That means there's no guessing for you what kind of infrastructure you're going to need for this project. There's uh, no wasting of the resources to find out if your infrastructure is going to perform, if it's going to do what you want it to. And let's see. Yeah, so remember as well with the infrastructure as a service or EAS alone, you still need all the system programmers, you still need all the server architects, you still need all these highly specialized professionals. With pause, you can eliminate a lot of that. So, no senior specialists, system specialists are needed. These days, most pause providers actually include a very clear pricing model. They're ready to go, and they often include specialized technical support as needed. And then there was <coughs> one other big thing I talked about at the beginning. Big one. Anybody remember? No capital expenditure. That's the big one, right? All right. So as I mentioned, obviously my opinion might be a bit biased. I'll accept that. I'm a cloud evangelist, that's what I do, go around and talk about saying how great I think it is. I'll, but, I'll play devil's advocate, we can consider the other side of the equation. Okay. The number one negative thing. What can somebody tell me negative about the cloud? Anybody? Anything? Nobody? It's not your infrastructure, so you have a complete control. Excellent. Thank you very much, sir. Um, that actually is point number three for me that I was going to come up with. And so I'm going to come back to that. There are some security concerns, but obviously that's two-handed. Thank you. you know, that goes both ways, frankly. Even if you've got your own kit, you're not necessarily getting a specialist tech who were able to defend your data that way. But nevertheless, there have been concerns over cough, maybe of the US. Uh, <laughs> uh, cough, maybe people. <coughs> cough, having a look at cough, stuff that's actually on the stuff, which is supposed to be secure. But that's a rumor, not a fact, so, you know. No, no, but it's perfect. That's actually... My number one point there about the cons is security and privacy. Okay, it's a repetitive thing. We hear it all the time. And the thing is, as the gentleman kindly pointed out, maybe other words, but I call it smoke and mirrors. Okay, security, I mean, if you've ever entered data into an electronic device, that means the potential exists somewhere for someone with malicious intent to take that information. However, Aaron, uh, uh, I'm, however, guess, well, I'm guessing that AWS is a bigger target than my Gmail account <laughs> for the Chinese or whoever. Perhaps, but they also invest <laughs> billions of dollars every Don't year. Wrong. Doesn't so, your Gmail account run an AWS anymore? Uh, <laughs> 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 All right. Anyway, the point is is that security and privacy hacking has been around forever. It's not going to go away. And, um, you know, it's just one of, the, one of the facts, plain and simple. So you can see it however you want. Take okay, number two, <coughs> outages. Okay? I call it smokescreen number two. This is IT. Outages happen. That's why you build redundant systems. Okay? Um, yeah, which, by the way, with some pause providers,
providers, they actually include that in their platform. Of course, there are some of the more technical pause providers, but that being said, building redundant systems is how you plan for outages, not assuming that there won't be outages. Okay? We're making up excuses when there are. Finally, number three, thanks for Tim, loss of control. I have no counter-argument there. That's not smoke and mirrors. You don't have control. I'll give you guys that one. That's the point for the cons. But uh, you have no control over the hardware. But the question that I would pose is simply, <coughs> is having control really that important? That's for you to decide. Anyway, I'm sure there are more. You know, we could go on for a long time picking out cons and so on. Can I just add another con on, on the cost? Because, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I said, I'm sure we could go on and on well, about cons. <coughs> well, it's also my, my, my cons, so I want to get your, your opinion on it, because I always thought that cloud computing was more expensive than dedicated servers, which you meant as well. So, yeah, there's right. no, no upfront cost there. Well, we can do dedicated servers in the cloud as well. No, I always looked at them slightly two different things. So, you, you'd say that is a cloud? Uh, well, our company, we actually have the option that we can dedicate servers. So. I can't speak for others, but uh, anyway, so the, as I say, I'm sure that we could come up with cons and I'm sure there are legitimate concerns, but that being said, if the cons, if, if the cons uh, outweigh the benefits of cloud computing, we probably wouldn't see the tremendous amount of growth in cloud computing that we're seeing. That alone tells me that the cost or that the benefits outweigh the, outweigh the costs. So, that being said, I'm going to close. Uh, I'm going to close with just two last things. My opinion, my advice, don't be like this CEO. Okay? You might get left behind. Instead, try to be like this CEO. Thank you very much. video clip in there of our platform. We offer the platform as a service. Um, it's meant to, actually here's brochures as well if anybody wants one. It's a high availability, fault tolerant platform for big Drupal projects. Uh, we actually have a theoretical capacity of about 41 million nothing cash page loads per month, starting with our smallest clusters. So when you, when you uh, that, I guess, sorry, that's the best answer is we offer your own virtual cluster that you're able to manage and build and use to develop your Drupal projects. The network engineer would have to go into link house and put in servers and look after the infrastructure and the switches. And it was quite frankly a pain in the arse. And um, so when software as a service, because it's not a no-brainer to me, because I don't have to deal with that. Some other poor person has to have a pain in the arse. Uh, and usually somebody from Amazon or Rackspace or somebody like yourself. And it's, that's, that was the thing, is if you've ever been to the house and the castle of Jenny, finding, going through racks and racks until you find your rack and then find your server and, yeah. It's just a no-brainer. One, one on the pro team. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not the like whole stuff. It's, thinking, it's just yeah. that's the biggest plus about cloud. Yeah. Is that you don't have to deal with that crap. Well, that's kind of the point. One of the points I'm, I was trying to make with just the time that is involved there. And if you're if you're paying for that time, that's your company revenue. Just. Going down the drain. And the pipeline. You, you might only be able to afford a hundred drink or a gig link. Yeah. You know, someone who's relatively new to cloud, um, because if you have, say, lamp stack, I mean, if you, platform as a, as a service, to me, it would just mean the hardware maintained, in effect, in the cloud mm -hmm. environment. But then you've got, you know, you've got Linux, and then uh, Apache, and so on, on top of that. So, where do these things come across? Because if you're looking, you've got to maintain each level, haven't you? Um, well, yeah, our system is virtualized, and I, I, on it, I mean, I'll just be upfront. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm not smart enough to explain some of that stuff to you guys, so uh, we have really great technicians to go into detail about that. But if I understood correctly, you're, are you looking for specifically the delineation between IAs, PAs, SAs, and DAs? Or? Well, let's say I've got a choice. I can, I can get a service where I've got something that's with Drupal already installed, and I go in and just provide content, yeah? and everything else is maintained. And then at the other end, you can just have effectively a hardware platform on which I install uh, a Linux server of my own, and it sits in the cloud, and then I just build anything on top of it. So yeah. that's, those are sort of two ends of what I might be looking at. But I don't see where these things cut across in terms of you know software as a service and platforms okay. as a service and infrastructure as a service. They, there seems to be a lot of grey area between them for me. Okay, perfect. No, thanks. Yeah. I understand now. Um, <coughs> the infrastructure as a service is if you take if you, if you took just AWS or Rackspace, mm -hmm. means that they have that computing capacity available for you. Now you still need senior programmers, system architects to go in and tell that what to do. This is beyond, yes, they might offer some caching or email stuff, but you still have to have the, the diagram I showed with all the, mm. the, that, you still have to have somebody to make the infrastructure do that. So PAWS and SAWS and DAWS are built on EMS, yeah? And uh, platform is, like with our platform, all of your, your LAMP stack and everything, it's already in there. Okay. So you don't have to deal with any of that provisioning or setting the stuff up to start developing. You go into the platform, you choose which core of Drupal you want, and then you start working. So you maintain a lab stack and it's all it's, it's inside and of and the And you platform. manage that as well. What to what extent is that managed? That we take manage. care of that's part of the cluster package. That's what we provide for you as a service. So if I go in there and install Drupal, I don't have to do that myself. That's just a it's just a click of the button. Right. You choose which core of Drupal you want, and within but that comes in as platform. You would consider that platform. That's in the platform. Okay. See, for me, I mean, I would say 